Hello everyone, and welcome back to my colonization series in Kerbal Space Program 0.25. In this episode, I hope to start building my Kerbin Orbit Space Station, which will primarily be meant to refuel the transfer tug that will bring payloads from Kerbin to the moon and then from the moon back to Kerbin. And uh, so that will be the main project for this episode. But first, in the previous episode, I was having trouble with parachutes. And so I've decided to do my own little test of the parachute system with real shoots. I've replaced my real shoot install with a, with a new install, but it's not a new version. I just uh, pulled the real shoot uh, folder out and uh, just put a new, ver a new copy of it in. And may maybe there was something weird about my install, so I was just trying that out. And so we'll see. Some people said I was going too fast for parachute deployment. Well, we'll find that out. We will find that out. And actually, I'm going to action group the shoots as well. Okay, well there's the real shoot editor, but we're not going to do any edits on this. Um, must go down, I mean, uh, here I'll show you all the settings just so that everybody is on the same page with this. So it looks okay to me as far as everything is concerned on these. So yeah, uh, so I'm going to say Arm parachutes will be one. Uh, we'll put deploy shoots as two. I'm going to have cut shoots as three. And disarm parachutes as four. I don't anticipate using either three or four, but you know, we'll, uh, we'll have that be a thing. So just who knows? Who knows what other tests we'll do with these this this in the future? You'll note it is orbital capable, so it can get into orbit barely, I think. So yeah, so we could do re-entry tests as well. And with that, let's take it out to Launchpad and see what we can do about determining the real nature of these parachutes. Okay, uh, SAS is on. Throttle up. And one other thing I can do with this eventually is uh, do some tests practicing landing on the launch pad. Something I don't do much. So uh, this will be sort of our version of the of the little uh, grasshopper, right? Okay, anyway, here we go. And, well, yep, stage. Okay, up we go. We're only, we're going to do a low speed test first and I'm going to do regular staging so what we're going to do is we're going to go up to 10 kilometers and then and then uh, start going back down uh, we'll uh, thrust to 10 kilometers we'll go higher than that uh, drifting up and then we'll be coming back down and then I'm going to do normal staging to activate the parachutes Okay, engine is cut. We have uh, less than half of our of our actual fuel left, though more than half of our delta V, of course. And so I'm going to let it drift up. We move a little bit westward. This is all in the safe deployment regime for the parachutes, but I'm going to deploy at uh, at 7,500 meters. Okay, normal staging. Okay, that failed. We've got to press spacebar again. Aha, okay, all right. So it's this thing where I have to press twice. All right, so, and I was going too fast. Let's see how fast I can go and still deploy the parachutes. So that'll be the next test. Okay, test article return safely. Let's recover vessel. Okay, it says we didn't get any science out of it, but I, I contend that we have done an experiment. Now, I am going to launch it again. Test under T. Test like alpha. Okay. Okay. 
All right, and this time I'm going to go all the way to space and then return. So we're going to be going to uh, 70 kilometers and then return it. And then what we're going to do is I'm going to deploy shoots right under the, uh, and our, whatever altitude it is, right under the uh, speed of sound. So I'm going to say uh, 280 meters per second. All right. We're below Mach 1. Okay, double space bar, and it works. Okay. Well, we haven't had a failure, so it's tough to say, but uh, I'm content with just uh, knowing that I can do it at around 280 is fine. And you can see that uh, we're already under the altitude that we were on the first try, which is more more like where we would be at in terms of speed if we were re-entering though some re-entries might be even worse than that but uh, let, let's let's say uh, 280 is the maximum and I'll keep it at that okay we can recover this so basically what was uh, throwing me off about the parachutes in the previous episode was that we apparently now have to double stage them in other words so we have to press the spacebar twice to activate them that wasn't the case even earlier in this series when I used uh, real shoots I have been using real shoots since the beginning of the series and uh, pressing the spacebar once always worked just fine so that that is a little bit confusing but as long as I know it it's fine now on to building the space station okay everyone well this is what I've cooked up and the interesting thing about this is that it's all, well, except for the boosters and the nose cone and this stack separator, it's all part of the station. Um, it, uh, this is going to be the fuel tank for the station as well as the first stage, well, the only stage of this launcher. So uh, this uh, skipper engine is just going to hang out with the station and provide station keeping, boosting, etc. capabilities. And in full disclosure, this is something I have tried out recently before. And the reason is, I, I have a test install and all that, and so uh, the, it's only a small variation on what I've tested before, and that is because I was curious about whether this would hold, hold up under the stress of launch. And so I just wanted to make sure of that, and also I didn't want to, uh, to see fair mirror space knocking some of the little bits off, especially, the, I, I didn't think seriously that the docking ports would be an issue, but because they are sticking out and I'm not using a fairing, I just wanted to make sure that that was all right. Uh, there's probably still quite a lot more drag than usual, uh, so that's that's a bit of a problem, but I think we can deal with that. I've made sure that we have extra Delta V. Um, the version I tested was different in a number of respects, uh, in particular, I didn't have RCS loaded on, and I also did not have the life support container. And so I was testing it uh, without those extra loads, and uh, that did not require boosters. So I've added boosters to compensate for the extra mass of life support container, which uh, this is about 1.8 tons, I think. So yeah, um, so maybe something could go wrong, but uh, oh, it's a 1.36 tons. And then of course there's the extra mass of the RCS system. So yeah, uh, maybe something could go wrong still because I've made some changes and added the boosters, uh, but I'm hoping that uh, the testing will, will prove true and that I have a safe system to get uh, the station into orbit. It is it's somewhat costly though it's a little bit cheaper than if I had fairings the fairings uh, would have made this much more expensive and uh, the boosters are a minor cost by comparison the boosters uh, here are 700 apiece uh, the large ones are 1800 so definitely not going there but actually the decouplers cost as much as the boosters themselves which is somewhat amusing um, yep I think uh, that's all I have to say here uh, we need to pick crew member and oh, okay uh, yeah and this is sort of in the way but uh, I think I'm gonna pick Milner because he's courageous and and a little bit silly 
Okay. Probably he's the type to do something very interesting on a space station. One thing we don't have here is solar panelry, and so we're going to have to uh, send up the solar array separately. But that's that's fine. It's got batteries on it. It should be able to last for a little while. We're just gonna have the one Kerbal in for now, and uh, we'll hope for the best. We don't need to stage these two at the same time. Just need like that. Okay. Now we can launch. All right, here we go with Milner Kerman, SAS on, throttle up, and let's see what our situation is. Everything looks solid. Life support. We have uh, 350 days worth in the emergency hab, 708 days worth in the Mooner station, 75 days worth in the rescue pod. Got to do something with that. Anyway, uh, I think we'll have probably around well, with one one Kerbal, it's not gotta be anything. I mean, it's gotta be a huge amount for this station. All right, uh, let's go. So uh, it looks like uh, looks like we're approaching nighttime here. Let's see the sun. Yeah, the sun's in the west, so that is how it is. Gonna execute a roll program. Okay, very good. Gonna go 85 and 80. So I've put lights on here, and the lights are sort of meant to match the color of the orbital construction systems modules. Uh, sort of a yellowish color to them. Uh, sort of a classic color if you will, uh, old filmy kind of color to it. So that's the lighting. And then of course, oh hold on, booster separation. Ooh, 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 bad. Okay, well, all right. Uh, thank goodness that didn't cause any problems. Again, boosters were a new thing added to this. Definitely not tested, otherwise I would have fixed something like that. Okay, um, as I was saying, uh, the color of the Moo, uh, this is the fuel tank, obviously, the, and I just went with the Moo texture because it seems like we're going with the whole um, pattern where all of our fuel supplies in orbit, I need to do this turn a lot faster. All of our fuel supplies in orbit uh, will have the Moo texture on them, and so that will be a pattern. I would like to get this into a reasonably high orbit. So it clashes a little bit with the rest of the station, but I hope it's not too bad. Okay, looks like all the connections have worked well. Should be able to get into a nice high orbit with this. I don't need the stuff transferring to and from the moon to have to make a lot of effort getting into a tight orbit around Kerbin or leaving a tight orbit around Kerbin. That's really not necessary. Okay, I'll coast to Wapwaps is here. I'll I'll do a multiple stage uh, so I'll, I'll boost up uh, first uh, set a new apoapsis and then I'm going to boost that apoapsis to bring the periapsis up the reason is I want to detach the nose cone so that re-enters so uh, that's what I'm doing here nose cone decoupled and the stack separator will eventually slide off I'm sure okay and uh, since I packed RCS on here, let me try and be a perfectionist about this. Not that it'll really let me, but... <laughs> yeah, it's it's being like that. Okay, um, yep, yeah, coasting to the new app lapses.
Yeah, that's a good place for a station, I think. Get a good look of Kerbin. Uh, for now, I'll have to be satisfied with that. I'll get it a little bit better. But uh, we're at 301, so we're sort of splitting the difference. Can't do it from here. I'm going to deploy the habitation ring. Very nice. Ooh, it spins! Oh, I guess that's a new feature, huh? Oh, that's great. I like that. Okay, so it spins all on its own. Wow, that's amazing. Gotta do more of that then. Um, yeah, good, spinning. I'm going to probably attach the solar panels on this side and have them extend out beyond the habitation ring. So, I mean, that'll be probably the best bet. Otherwise, uh, putting anything else on here... I don't know. I'd rather have all of the docking with uh, other spaceships and such go on on this side. Milner is excited. Do, uh, do we have IVA yet? Oh, that's not bad, actually. It's uh, certainly better than nothing. Very nice. Okay. So Milner's got his uh, little little place to live. All right, uh, yes, solar panel arrays. Okay, so now we turn to something that I have not tested at all and could go very wrong. Uh, this is, well, first of all, let's uh, take care of the base stage. I, this is a further improvement on the Yakko, and this is meant to be recoverable, as you can see. But these are no longer the airbags because the airbags got bundled with the rest of the USI survivability pack and now I've got flotation devices. There they are. Uh, we've got small, medium, and large. Uh, they're all the same mass, confusingly enough. I guess most of the mass is air. I don't know. Uh, the problem is uh, these are the mediums. The large is huge. Now, you'd think, well, for something this big, well, let's, let's see it inflated. That's probably the better thing to do. Uh, let's say I put it on here and inflate it. Okay, yeah, I mean, that, that looks like something that would be meant for this, right? Um, maybe I'll have to go to that, but I'm hoping... I'd prefer more diversity rather than just size. So we've got these medium ones. They're smaller, but hopefully they'll suffice. We'll find out. I don't know if they work better on water than the airbags. The airbags we still have here, but we're going to see. They're action group to action group zero. Uh, we've got the parachutes, and uh, again, staged uh, in two sets so that we don't uh, put too much g-force on the situation. And then finally, <coughs> excuse me, and then finally our solar array, which is a little bit complicated. We don't have the huge solar panels yet. We don't have even decently sized solar panels yet. Uh, what we do have is uh, these little full photovoltaic trusses, and okay. Good, and uh, I'll take it. So what we have is it, it's a little bit of a um, what you call it a spoiler to do it in here, but uh, let's let's go for it. Uh, goes out like this. Uh, well, we'll position it a little bit better. Uh, the solar rays. Let's get a better view here. Boop, 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 boop. Solar rays go like that. And then we can we have to manually rotate them, so we'll have to keep track of making sure that things look right. Okay, unfortunately they they don't quite extend as far as I might need them to. I consider putting uh, another uh, what is it uh, one of these tele telescopic pistons here so that we could extend them even further. But maybe, maybe not. Uh, there's possibility for extending, uh, creating more solar panels. We've got uh, small docking ports out here, so that if we want to lock some more in, we can do that. I think that's okay, though. I, uh, I hope I'm not uh, making too many uh, OCD people upset because it's not quite aligned. Getting the door hinges quite right uh, for that is a little bit tricky. Okay, so pack it all back. That looks square. Okay. 
So that's the situation. It got a lot. Uh, this this thing uh, is an octo girder mission support. It's got mod propellant and plenty of electric charge. And of course, I want mod propellant because that's how we're going to get this to the station. Really, it's going to maneuver itself there. Okay, I think the best points are spoken for. Except maybe I should add more RCS blocks. I think that is settled. All right. So, many things could go wrong. We'll see what happens. This is going to be our first time getting a Yakko stage to orbit and then deorbiting it. So, a daily re-entry, fair mirror space, all sorts of things could have problems with what I'm about to do. Okay, here we go. Let's hope I've got all the struts on right. Throttle is up, SAS is on. Surface mode, plenty of delta V, and launch. Getting some extra pauses. I think that is because I've been playing for quite a long time. I should have restarted the game before launching. My mistake. So now, obviously, uh, the parachute tests that we did earlier in this episode are going to come into play here. As we try to return to stage, but it won't be the only thing. It'll be the sort of the last, well, second to last thing, aside from the flotation devices. Okay, I'm going for an apoapsis of 100 kilometers. I'm going to dump the fairings now. Okay, nice and clean. I think that would be best. Uh, boosting it high, letting it uh, hit the target like that. Could take a lot of delta V to match velocities though. We'll see. Okay. I'm gonna let the the truss take care of all the rest of its own maneuvering. Hopefully its RCS will be sufficient for that. Let's separate. Okay, the truss is on its own now. But I'm for now currently more interested in this portion. It does have some extra fuel to decelerate, but we don't know its characteristics yet. Don't know what to aim for. Okay. I think I'm going to have that sort of a burn at apoapsis for it. But let's take a look at what we need to do for this truss. It looks like it needs some adjusting of its own. Okay. We have a good intercept. Uh, oh yes, uh, smart ISS. Go off, please. I can handle this. Nope, can't really do too much better than that for now. Okay. So that's going to intercept uh, the station in like 29 minutes. First thing will be to take care of our retro burn for this. But it's going to get a little bit complicated. I don't know how long the docking will take. I'll have to pay attention to where this is. Unlike previous iterations of the Yakko stage, uh, this has its own reaction wheel now, and that was necessary, of course, for for this sort of re-entry recovery test. Okay, well, it's got its retro burn. I don't know if that's going to be enough. Well, should be interesting. Okay, now, next... I'm going to have to go back to the truss and just make sure it's uh, it's going to 
be close enough to its target. You can see the divergence between the Yakko stage and this mission. Okay, we've got a lot to do here. Um, tell you what, target, negative relative velocity. Okay, RCS, burn. Okay, well, we've got enough fuel. It's just a matter of if we have enough time. I'll come back to you with that answer. Okay, so I couldn't quite manage it on a single burn. It was just too much to handle with RCS. So it's going to have to go around a few times to meet the target, unfortunately. Uh, but it does give us some time to pay attention to the Yakko stage, so I'm going to switch back to that. Okay, here we go. First full Yakko stage re-entry test. We're going to be coming along close to the home continent but that's not a that's not the big problem here it's not a matter of where we land it's a matter of if we land that's the trick actually if we hit land using the flotation devices would probably be a bad idea I guess we have to figure out whether we're gonna hit land or hit water otherwise uh, that'll de I mean because that'll determine whether we should use airbags or the these uh, flotation devices. Not sure. Could be that this is a little bit too deep into the atmosphere for a re-entry of this particular vehicle. We are about to find out. Of course if I wanted to slow down manually I could. I've got 469 meters per second of delta V available to me. Oh, and I'm going to. Ooh, overheating, definitely need to react to that. It looks like everything has survived. I don't know what was overheating, but better not to take any chances. That's the home continent. Looks like we're... So I put inflatable... Uh, flotation devices on and sure enough this time we're going to be hitting land. <laughs> I just hope we don't hit the mountains. I guess I can uh, fix that. Uh, let's wait until it draws in a little bit. How is the heat now? Getting hot again. Okay. Sounds like a good time to use the rest of my fuel to slow down. Okay, no more of that possibility. <laughs> Still look uh, that that probably made things even worse when it comes to the mountains. Oh, uh, okay, well that's not good. Uh, Smart ASS go off. Give me control. I need to spin this a little bit. Parachute test said 280. I think it was the lowermost uh, flotation device that actually got hurt by that. I don't know if this is going to do any good. We're <laughs> we're aimed. What? 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 No! 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 You don't do that. 
These these uh, flotation devices are way pickier than the airbags were. Or maybe the airbags are like this now too. Okay, anyway, I have to pay attention. Okay, below Mach 1, pre-deployment and deployment. Okay, SAS off. Uh, okay, well, we're going to have to deploy the second serv uh, salvo. Okay, and airbags slash, oh, don't do that, don't go that way. Uh, <laughs> okay, flotation devices for some reason. Uh, 8.07.9, pretty heavy. And actually, possibly because I've added stuff to the front here, and that's a problem. Get ready for some noise. Ah. Oh wait, wait. Um. We we sort of. Oops. We got a few of the engines. Uh, it looks like all of the little flotation device things sort of fall, fell off. That's uh, or parachutes. Those, those my yeah. Those are the parachute deployments. Devices. Okay, well, let's recover this. Okay, so if you thought that the game would crash as soon as I pressed Recover Vessel, congratulations, you were right. And I tried to uh, fly, go back to the actual, um, I guess we could call it a probe, the remaining pieces of the Yakko probe, the Yakko launcher. Uh, my frame rates were basically zero, so it seems to have the same problem that I had with the uh, there was that rover delivery A on the moon that was causing the frame rate problem. So uh, some parts that are involved in the Yakko launcher also have that problem when they're in a debris state apparently. So that's interesting to note uh, and that means I'll recover it from here instead. So yep, uh, not, not much by way of funds left from that. Um, that's the actual truss and let me pick up the pieces of the of the probe while we're at it because there are a lot of those now okay so funny thing happened when I was uh, trying to recover all that debris from the launcher uh, for some reason when I clicked on a piece of debris from the launcher and pressed recover it decided to recover the Kerbin Station core instead, this station. Um, how it managed to do that, it even gave me the dialogue where it showed how much uh, uh, funds I recovered, about 25,000. Um, that wasn't supposed to happen. There's no way you're supposed to be able to to recover something in orbit anyway. Uh, so I have no idea what happened there. It even recovered Milner Kerbin and said that he was available for duty. Um, so. In full disclosure, I had to go into the persistent file and put everything back in place. And here I am trying to make sure that everything is a-okay. And it looks like Milner Kremen is fine. And everything is fine. Yeah. But that was a little bit weird. I don't know how it managed to recover this, but... There was no warning, of course. Uh, you click Recover Vessel and it asks you, uh, are you sure you want to do this? But it doesn't tell you which vessel you're recovering, I don't think, in that dialogue. Anyway, it's sort of reflexive to say, yes, I, I'm, I'm, I'm good with uh, recovering this. And then it suddenly popped up with a dialogue for Kerbin Station Core, and I was like, oh, God. So, yeah. <clears throat> bit of drama there. Took a little bit of time to uh, fix up the persistent file, make sure all the sections that referred to this were there. So, in, for instance, there's a TAC life support section. There is the section for the actual vessel. And then there's also a particular section for Milner Kerman to make sure that he is not available, that he is assigned. Make sure that that's right. Okay, anyway, so back to normal. And now, now let's uh, get the truss over here.
Okay, so I've time warped uh, about seven hours, a little less, less than seven hours, and uh, we are now using RCS to try and get a little bit closer to the station again. Since uh, once we had passed the station at high speed, we we were way out of position after that, so it took a little bit of time to get back into sync with things. Okay, this time it looks like we're going to be a little bit more successful. Going to be docking at this end. Let's go to the station core and make sure everything is good with that. Ah, reaction wheel magic. You can't beat it. Okay, and uh, let's have lights on as well. Okay, Smart ESS can go off now, and we'll switch back. Wow, well, the, the station is pretty dark when approaching from this side, and the trusses as well. I really didn't do a very good job on lighting this time. Relied too much on these uh, Mark II illuminators. Well, anyway. There we go. Okay, docking port magic time. And we have connection. Okay, well, in this one case, I'm going to wait until daylight to get everything situated and all the solar panel re in place and we should also correct the orbit of the station okay should have good visuals now alright uh, in front of robotics need the hinge first Okay, solar array position next. Okay, and now to face the sun. I guess this is all right. It will definitely replenish our electrical supply very quickly in fact if you take a look at the generation versus drain of course not all of our functions are active yet speaking of which uh, activate habitat I don't know if we we can do that yet activate uh, command our punch cards are full I'm I have yet to actually make use of punch cards. We will have to see about that. But anyway, um, this is, I don't know, it doesn't look quite right. Um, oh, why are they backwards? Hey, in the in the VAB it was all right. Ah, oh, that's not right. Well, well, actually, actually, I think I can fix that. Hold on. I hope. Let's see. Uh, Yeah, this one has invert axis on. Maybe I'll sh I should turn it off. Okay, now they're both doing the same thing. Uh, they're a little bit off, though. Okay, that looks fine. Let's say now invert axis off. Okay, I think this is this is more like it. Yep, this is the beginning for Milner Kerman. But uh, we'll keep in mind that it should be plus uh, normal plus. 
positive normal direction but I actually want to do some orbital adjustments which means I want to be prograde right now okay I think I'll have to be satisfied with that we are in a 300 by 299.5 kilometer orbit and that is about as picky as I can bring myself to be All right, and there you have it, the beginning of our Kerbin Orbit space station. Just the beginning, mind you, but it's got all the necessary features. Granted, the solar panel array is a little bit underwhelming, but we've got uh, options to expand upon that and uh, expand upon many other things as well. And we've got this nifty little rotating section thanks to, thanks to orbital construction system. So with that, after many struggles, Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.